Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are embarking on something of a new mission, a new series. Uh, yeah, there is going to be a whole lot of unknowns here, but also, more importantly, there's going to be no reverting of flights, and there will be no respawning of crews. I think everything else will be fine. We've got a research bodies is going to be a mod because, of course, we're going to have a completely new planetary system. For those of you who are wondering, yes, this is a graphics glitch. Don't worry. The real planet will have clouds that actually make sense. We're going to have Kerbal launch failure with things occasionally breaking and maybe some other goodies in there. We're going to accept these and we are going to get going. So let's start. Now, the puffter. A great deal of consultation with people in the know is Galileo's planetary system, which has many, many moons. This is Gale. This is the planet we start on, and you, it's a very much large land masses and large oceans. You'll note also that the Kerbal launch facilities look rather nice. I think that's the SXT++, but I could be wrong. There are so many mods in this that I honestly don't know everything that's here. Let's get started. We have a long way to go and hopefully this will last many, many episodes as I learn to actually play this game. Now, um, I think actually we could probably start out with a plane because, hey, you know, normally we start out with sounding rockets, but I do know that we get a plane cockpit at uh, level one or whatever. Let's do that. Plane and we need some fuel, right? What do we have? We have a f LFO barrel. <laughs> I see LFO barrel and all I can think of is L. F. O. I think I like that one better. <laughs> Let's put the cockpit a little back. Reason is, I'm pretty sure that I have no landing gear. Let me see. Yeah, no landing gear. But you know what? First mission. First mission. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to put some wings here. How, better watch my stability versus center of mass. Uh, it's just borderline right now, but don't worry, we'll put some wings on the back there. And there we go. And in fact, I'll duplicate these one more time. This is looking good. And then we need to, of course, put some tail on this. Oh, I wonder if I could do this and just have like a, an inclined tail for control. Oh, that's not going to be... That's going to be very strange, isn't it? You know what? I could just grab this. Just stick these on here, see, with the things already attached properly. That way we should get some kind of lift. I don't know what we'll call this. We'll call these this the Hermes. It has thrust to weight ratio of 1.21. And what we need to also do is add some... We could add an electrical system, because why not? Got to make sure we don't make the center of mass move too far back. We need to add an antenna to make sure that we can talk to our people all over the world. There we go, we'll stick that there so it kind of looks like a gun shooting between the, the things. Do we have experiments? Yes, we do. We have the too hot thermometer and we have the press mat barometer. Now, without any wheels, the good thing I note is that our thrust to weight ratio is 1.16, so we should be able to get off the pad just using the power of this this uh of this engine here. So structural. Yes, we do have one of these. So grab the whole thing, flip it on its back, and attach this to it. Oh, this is gonna be so much this is gonna be so pioneering. Look at this thing. This is gonna be a disaster. I'm sure it's gonna work just fine. So yeah, let's make this happen. We're gonna put pitch and, y well, we're gonna not take that off. We're gonna have pitch and yaw. Let's just check, deploy. Uh, yeah, let's not, the deploy is clearly broken in this case. Not sure what parts are bringing it, but they clearly don't know what they're doing. So we're gonna do some roll. Uh, actually, we're, I, I forget that this is disable. <laughs> Smart people would know that. I'm just going to take these off. If there was a way to make that... Oh, actually... No, never mind. Let's just do it. Save. Launch. Are we ready to go? Should probably actually make this happen first. One grand step into the unknown. Okay. 
How? <laughs> Look at the number of buttons on the side here. All systems are go. That means nothing is broken. All systems go. Throttled up. Let's bring up my little science menu here. Science here and now. I should actually be able to do this on the launch pad. Crew report. Yay. Transmit that. Temperature scan. Transmit. Atmospheric pressure scan. Transmit. Now throttle up. Engine starts. Now I've got to wait until we get enough thrust here. How heavy is this thing? I don't know, I'm going to wait this to see how how high up this can get. Six, seven, eight. I hope this thing doesn't weigh more than like 800 kilograms, otherwise this thing isn't going to go very far. Nine. Okay, let's try it. Let's press space. Oh, okay. Shortest flight ever. Is that landed technically? That's what I... It is starting to slide up a little here. <laughs> it says that technically I am landed, so incidentally because we have landed, we have already completed some important stuff. We've launched our first vessel, we've achieved the goal of... We have... We have performed our first experiment, we have broken a land distance record of one... How did we break a land distance record? Probably because the base moved and now we're starting to slide up Whoa! and that's us still I think that is a pretty successful first flight we could have used more thrust it's, yeah it's just my fault for believing what uh what I was told by Kerbal engineer never trust Kerbal engineers obviously we can EVA and collect some more science while we're here oh it is very light. Let's, um... Oh, we have a parachute. That's great! EVA report. Yes, keep that data. Oh, no, I can't transmit that data. Let's recover the vessel and see how far we've gone with this first bull known. This very short step. I have to say, his first step was a little more successful than Yogur Kerman. Let's not forget that. Oh, we've got 20 science, we got a ton of funds here. That means that we can research stuff and unlock stuff. Look at this, more structural pieces here. Oh yes, 3.9 left. So yeah, we have a lot of uh, USI stuff. We are going to be doing some colonization because, well, because why not? Let's see if we can actually make this thing fly. So, obvious way to make this thing fly would be to give it more engines or a little more thrust want to just get it into the air. Now, do we have... Do we have now some of this new decoupler technology? We do! So we could decouple... We could put a rocket engine on and then decouple it near the time. Of course, my Kerbal Sense immediately starts tingling as I come up with this and then realize... No, that is gonna suffer the usual aerodynamic balance issues, so... Quick assembling pushes things towards the front and we start getting towards a design which is perhaps more acceptable. And so here we are, ready for launch. I don't think this... Oh! Wait a second! A great lesson has been learned or has to be learned. Check your staging. Because, yes, uh, we got to make sure these things happen in the right order. This and the engine needs to come down, everything needs to fire, and now we are going skywards like a bat out of hell. Jebediah Kerman has got his mouth open, he's screaming and awesome, he's going, oh yes. I know you wouldn't normally get to fly a rocket, because we haven't invented rocket capsules yet. We only have, this is the only crude component that we have at this time, but wow. This thing flies great! I mean, it's like flying stably. Can I turn? Oh, it's totally turning and everything as well! Wow, I... This has had... This is second flight and it is stable and I have not managed to kill Jebediah yet. Although, to be fair, I do have to land this thing at some point. And so now we have a working plane. We can go exploring and looking for science. At least, assuming we can get over these hills. So, of course, normally this would be one of these times where I go to like four times regular speed. And, well, this is no exception. 
So off we go into the land of much, much faster time, appreciating the plane and its beautiful looks in this new world, and flying over the water we get a science alert. Actually, it's called Science Here and Now, which is a replacement for Science Alert that mostly does the same thing as far as I'm concerned. It lets me know when there's new stuff to be scienced. So I collect it, and then I begin to transmit it, and then I realize that I've run out of electric charge because this dinky little engine is generating less than one-fifth of a charge unit per second. This will take a long time for me to get enough power here. Also, I note that I have oxidizer and liquid fuel on this thing. I could have left that oxidizer behind and made this thing a whole lot more safe. Actually, who gives a toss about being safe? No, uh, we're, we just wanted to save some mass there. Sure, the fact that you would not be sitting immediately behind a vat of some sort of horrifically toxic oxidizer would probably make Jebediah feel a little safer, but he would probably be more interested in the fact that he could go higher and faster. Anyway, having been in the air for about 10 minutes, it was decided that Returning back to base wasn't necessarily the most interesting or pioneering option, but it was the one that was certainly going to keep me from getting bored. Sure, I could have landed out in the grasslands, but I still don't have science from the water, so around we turn and off we go. Anyway, as we return back across the mountains, it's worth mentioning some of the other mods that we have. In particular, one of the things I'd like this to be a focus uh, in this series would be Umbra Space Injuries. Uh, sorry, Umbra Space Industries uh, <laughs> Colonization Mod. That is, of course, Rover Dude, and he has a colonization mod which lets you, of course, fly to planets, harvest stuff, keep everyone alive, and spread fertilizer everywhere. It looks quite complicated and I'm really looking forward to learning all of its ins and outs and no doubt having people comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Regardless, Jebediah has little time to think about such uh, ambitious plans. For now, he is simply thinking about his ambitious plane and whether it can safely ditch in the ocean. But this propeller, not only does it have a shutdown option, but we can set reverse thrust on it. And look at it, it essentially just cuts the thrust, oh, and it goes into reverse. But hey, it looks like everything survived. Maybe a bit of a heavy landing there, but Jebediah is in one piece, and so, yeah, so is the plane. That is a good sign. So what should we do now? We'll just shut this down so that it's in normal mode. I don't want to shut down the engine just yet because I'm still recharging the battery, but we do seem to be moving across the ocean, albeit slowly. The reason I want to get the batteries charged up is because I still have a temperature reading that I need to do, so maybe I can just climb across the mo the thing and grab it. Oh, cr in the water. Oh no, and it's running away! No, 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 no! Jebediah! Jebediah, swim for your life! Swim like the science depends upon it. Well, it does. I mean, swim. It's like science is all that matters here. Faster, faster. Oh, poor thing. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's ditching down into the ocean now. <laughs> now that he is no longer weighing down the cockpit, clearly it has become a lot more buoyant. I'm not sure that's what's actually happening, but that is my theory and I'm sticking to it. But hopefully, because it is now uh, concerned with going down, I can catch it by going sideways, you see? While it's not realizing, I'm going to totally go for it. Note the camera mod that makes the transition from one place to another a whole lot better. A whole lot more... So oh, what the heck? I think I might have to adjust the wobbly camera, because wobbly camera... is. I've never played the game with the wobbly camera, to be honest. I've... Uh, you know, I played the game... In the days before there was a camera to wobble. Well, there was a camera, but it didn't wobble. And so when they started adding wobbly camera, that the first thing I did was turn it off. Come on, let's get inside this thing. We need to rescue this plane. We need to shut it down and send the data back. <laughs> we're getting we're getting EVA reports and stuff that are that's really interesting. What is oh it's flying, it thinks we're flying. Come on! Get on there. Get onto the plane. Get 
No. <laughs> he goes to stand up. He performs the stand up animation in the water. Yes. 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 Get on. Get on the plane and shut and shut things down. Why? Why is the cabin so hot? Why is the cabin suddenly getting really, really hot? Did did Jeb like leave the heater on or something? Okay, we can transmit this data though. Transmit, and they've got all the data, and now, 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 I can actually do that temperature scan, and I can keep that around for future use. And with that, with that, I can, well, before this thing explodes from overheating, maybe it's time for me to return to the space center and examine the spoils of war, the things that have returned, the things that I have brought back, and whether they will be useful to me for future missions. Money, reputation, all that. That's great, that's a good start. So one other rule that I'm kind of making to avoid me making a beeline for any one particular science and optimizing things, we're going to do the tech as it appears in order. So there's going to be no shortcuts or anything here. I'm not going to make a beeline for any particularly desired tech. Oh, tons of wings here, excellent. And general rocketry, more engines, more fuel, more ambitious ideas, and I suspect that that is as far as I can get. We also no doubt have a number of missions and stuff that I can check out. We still need to escape the atmosphere and orbit Gale, but to do that we will actually have to employ some sort of scientific uh, rocket type thing. Well, we might as well build something like that, right? Over at the mission control, well, it's probably time to accept the this one, and we should probably accept orbit. Actually, are there any ones we can do tested? La launch site lander, you know what? We need to upgrade mission control. Right click, upgrade, and then in we go. Uh, 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 test at the launch site, hell yes. Test the stack separator, yes. Uh, no, we're not going to test anything on escape trajectories just yet. So, skipping the rather simplistic building, off we go here. So, that's us two contracts in the bag and heading skywards at almost 5G, I guess? Mystery Good desperately wants to be tested. Oh yes, it really wants to be tested in this lower atmosphere. But no, I'm going to save my goo. I'm going to save my goo for that very special place. Not just the upper atmosphere, but space. Oh, wait. Shoot destroyed by aerodynamic forces. No! Damn it. Damn it. Uh, Mystery Goo. No in-range comm devices. Great. Thank you. So... I... My plan was to have this drift gently back to the surface and get recovered with all the goo and all the science and maybe have the ability to transmit the the atmospheric pressure and the science, the temperature data. But no, I was too dumb and I completely forgot to include an antenna and also I forgot to check your staging <laughs> and uh, therefore destroyed my parachute. Oh, funny. Oh, the laughs. Now, I wonder where this is going to end Actually, up. Actually, I know where this is going to end up. I'm going to finish this episode as this thing falls down towards the space center. Does it hit something important? Does it break something important? Or does it just leave the first of many holes in the terrain? Well, we'll find out in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.